to the other end. So, and down here, we've got the Skechers Razor 3 from, once again, from 2000. Oh boy, everybody. I feel like St. Nicholas, a big bag of marathon racing shoes right here. Okay, thank you for your patience. I know a lot of you have been waiting for my decision on what shoes I will be racing in at the Amsterdam Marathon. I'm gonna lay them all out here for you. And there's a lot of options out there um, at, a, at a lot of different price points as well. That's a huge factor. So let's lay them all out here for you. We're gonna start with the Nike Vaporfly 4% Flyknit from uh, 2018, New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel. We got the Nike Zoom Fly Flyknit. And I realize some shoes are better options than others, but I just want to show you everything. We got the Hoka Carbon X. I want to show you everything, okay? And yes, we even got the Hoka Carbon Rocket. There we go. Let me just spread these out a little bit. Hold on. I'm going to move down to the other end. So, and down here, we've got the Skechers Razor 3 from, once again, from 2018. Let's see, what else do we got? Oh, oh, here's one. Oh, an oldie but a goodie. I think the Adios 4, but just so everybody knows, the Adios 5 just came out. So this is again 2018. Uh, and then of course, the big bad dog that all of you have probably been waiting for, the Nike Next Percent. There it is, the fast one. I better put this one down here next to the, its uh, big, or I should say little brother. So um, I am, I'm struggling. Uh, let me just run you through all these real quick. Skechers Razor 3. This is more of a trainer, but I think you could run a marathon in it, especially at the price point that now, again, these some of these shoes are from 2018, so there are updated versions now that you can purchase. Uh, for example, the Razor 3. But I, I really love this shoe for 20 mile long runs um, last year in 2018. So anyway, it's an option. Now, the Audios 4, as you probably know, Nike and Adidas are the two leading companies in the world for marathon racing shoes. So don't count out uh, Adidas in the discussion. A lot of the elites in London, in Berlin, actually I should say Berlin this weekend, um, and then Chicago in two weeks from then, and then in Amsterdam, a lot of them will be in uh, Adidas. Not necessarily the Adios lineup, but it is an option out there for some people. For, uh, yeah, for some people, okay. Moving on, next percent. Oh, don't have to say much about this. Uh, Kipchoge will be wearing this shoe in Vienna. I don't know about the upper. It sounds like it might be the Flyknit, but I heard that Mo Farah at the Great North Run in, uh, in the UK, he wore the next percent with the Flyknit upper. So fascinating. Um, yeah, I'll come back to the next percent in a second. And then the Vaporfly 4%. This, this shoe has a very, special place in my heart for a lot of different reasons. I guess, first of all, this is the shoe I wore in 2018 when the channel started to grow uh, because a lot of you out there were searching for more information about this shoe. So I love the Nike Vaporfly 4% Flying. It's um, a great option. And then moving on to the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel. I think New Balance is pushing the uh, envelope forward with this fuel cell lineup. It has that little teeny tiny plate there. Uh, you can see it there in the outsole, that little dark blue spot. So I don't know, um, for the price point, I think, oh, I think you're looking at $130, maybe $140. That is not bad for the Fuel Cell Rebel. And then moving on to another Nike, the Nike Zoom Fly Flyknit. This is the React Foam through the midsole. A little, definitely heavier than the other two Nike options, but if you're looking for a shoe that's gonna get the job done it's not the lightest shoe on the market still has a carbon fiber plate in that midsole boom and you and you want to save a few bucks this is a good option okay and last but not least the two hoka shoes so um i when i gave my full review of the carbon rocket i said that this is a 10k and half marathon shoe which i still am going to stick with that but um if you want a shoe that has a little more ground contact feel and uh, yeah, a little more ground cut. It's a, it's a firmer landing than basically all the other options that I showed you except for the Audios 4 from Adidas. It actually, I would put it in the category of the Audios 4 as far as feel through that midsole. Um, I'm still gonna say it's a, 10, it's a 10 mile half marathon 10K shoe from Hoka. And then the Hoka Carbon X, the uh, 50 mile world record holder wore this shoe, Jim Walmsley. 
Uh, I like it. It's got good bounce. I wore it in my 24 mile long run yesterday. Um, so there it is. There's the lineup, all the marathon. Let me just run you through them one more time. This is, these are all the shoes that I would consider for the Amsterdam marathon in, uh, in three and a half weeks, three and a half weeks. So we got the Skechers Razor 3, Adidas Audios 4, Nike Next Percent, Nike Vaporfly 4% Flying It, New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel, Nike Zoomfly Flying It, Hoka Carbon X, and Hoka Carbon Rocket. So there you go. I am, uh, I'm excited about my options. I definitely will choose one of these and we're gonna go back to the studio uh, right now and I'm gonna give you my thoughts on three shoes in particular that are in the final in the final run. In fact, I'll just tell them to you right now, okay? So we're gonna eliminate, we're gonna eliminate the Razor 3 gets drawn back, the Audios 4 gets drawn back, the next percent, uh, just kidding, just kidding, next percent stays, uh, the uh, New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel gets drawn back, the Zoomfly Flying It, and the Hoka Carbon Rocket. So therefore, this slides down. Here they are, the three finalists for the Amsterdam Marathon. Not too shabby. The Marathon Racing Shoe Decision 2019. Here we go. Hoka Carbon X, Nike X percent, Nike Vaporfly 4% flying it. So you're probably wondering, Seth, why isn't the Carbon X sitting up here? It's because it's getting the cut. That's right. The first shoe to be cut out of the top three is the Carbon X. And I'll tell you why right now. It's the weight. That's all. This shoe is going to slim down in the next iteration in 2020. I guarantee it. It's about an ounce too heavy right now to really compete with these two Nike shoes. Hoka though, you're moving in the right direction with the Hoka Carbon X. I cannot wait for your 2020 iteration of this shoe. Uh, so stay tuned. I'm hoping for good things in 2020, but for right now, the only reason, uh, like it's nice ride, good cushion. I feel bouncy and springy in the shoe after the 24 mile long run yesterday in the Carbon X felt great. But again, it's just a smidge too heavy for the Amsterdam Marathon. Okay, there we go. So that leaves us with two to go, the Vaporfly and the Next Percent. Now this is not an official comparison video between these two shoes. I have to point out a couple of things just to help tell the story, paint the picture for all of you. The biggest difference absolutely is the upper. I mean, there's, there's certainly differences between the midsole as well. Uh, it's got that ZoomX midsole in both shoes, the carbon fiber plate in both shoes, different outsole pattern. You see it there on your screen right now. Definitely a different outsole pattern. Um, I might give a thought on that in a minute, but definitely, you know, that, that flying it upper and the vapor weave upper. Now I said this, I'm gonna do my best to try and find this clip from July of 2019, where I said this about the vapor weave upper. And it's very lightweight, very malleable. In fact, when I was lacing up today, I just was thinking, huh, I'm a little confused as to why it's scrunching up so much through the toe box and at the, at the bottom of the eyelet chain. There you have it. That was my first impression of the vapor weave upper material coming right out of the box, taking it out for the first run. And I actually think that I nailed it. I wasn't that far off base because I'm reading and listening to some other people out there uh, talk about this vapor weave and I don't know if everyone is sold or all in. In person, like the fact that Mo Farah, the best long distance runner right now from Great Britain, Britain he, um, he, he, he raced in the fly knit on uh, not the vapor weave at that Great North Run as I already mentioned. So anyway, right now, I'll just, I'm just gonna, here it comes, here it comes. Little drum roll, please, little drum roll. If I had to wake up in the Netherlands tomorrow morning, if I was in my hotel right now, making a decision, uh, getting ready for Amsterdam tomorrow morning, and I had to choose one of these shoes for my racer at the 2019 Amsterdam Marathon, yeah, you better believe it, it's the Nike Vaporfly 4% Flying It. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? It's not the Nike Next Percent. Now, let me explain myself, kind of air it out a little bit. Uh, first of all, I just have to say that this shoe feels like yeah, I'm at home in the shoe. It feels very familiar, very comfortable. It's not, uh, it's not foreign to me when I put on that flying it upper, even the feel of the midsole. So here are my three or four points as to why, if I had to choose tonight, for Amsterdam tomorrow, I would go with this shoe. Point number one, 
The, as I already mentioned, the Flyknit feels so much more at home. I feel a better lockdown in the Flyknit versus the Vapor, Vapor Weave. And I remember in my first impression vlog, upper right hand corner, if you wanna go watch it, I remember saying that the scrunching up through the toe box of that Vapor Weave material, I didn't like it. I, I, don't, I still don't like it. Um, so that's, that's point number one. So point number two, I'm getting some rubbing through the heel counter. So this is the heel counter right here at the back of the shoe where your Achilles tendon uh, connects to your, your heel. See that little piece of material, that black right there. I don't know if you can see it. Hopefully I can get a zoomed in shot of that. It's a little piece of padding to basically help lock your heel into the shoe because the vapor weave material is so thin. They have to, they basically have to put that piece of material in there to lock your heel in and give you a little bit of uh, reprieve. Like you would get such a bad blister if that wasn't there rubbing against this vapor weave material, the green part. So I'm not loving the feel of that black material, that little cushion there at the back. And right now I am suffering from a few blisters at the back of my heel, uh, the, on my Achilles tendon. I'm hoping to clear that up as soon as possible, uh, but I'm training at high levels right now. So it's a little difficult to do that. So right now I don't like the feel. And frankly today, taking the, uh, the Flyknit, the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit back out, I did not feel the blisters at all today through this upper at all, at all, at all. I, I don't know what else to tell you. Like that's a huge issue for me right now. So I am very, very bullish on this upper right through the heel counter right now compared to the heel counter on the next percent. And point number three, it's kind of a couple points. I'll wrap it into one though, is that the next percent feels, so it's, it's a little lighter. Okay, I'm gonna put the weight on your screen right now. Both shoes, same size. You see it on your screen right now. So it is a little lighter ever, ever so slightly. But here's the deal. It feels like, and I said this in my first impression vlog, it feels like the next percent. It feels like I'm wearing boats on the bottom of my feet. The stack height is so tall and the, the landing area is just a little wider than the, than the Vaporfly 4% that it feels like I have, I don't wanna say clown shoes, but it feels like I have boats on my feet. It almost feels like they're not as aerodynamic as the 4%. Um, and last point is that I feel like the next percent is in charge of me rather than me being in charge of the shoe. In the 4%, I feel in charge of the shoe, okay? Um, I feel in charge when I'm wearing this shoe. Like I'm in control, I'm moving forward. Oh, everyone, isn't this crazy? So last point is that tomorrow morning when you're watching this actually, I'm gonna be doing my first threshold run leading into Amsterdam. You better believe I'm taking out the next, uh, the, the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit for a threshold run, meaning fast. So I'm gonna solidify my opinion that this is the shoe for Amsterdam for me. Um, right now, this is my shoe. I really, I don't think it's gonna change. I, I'm, I'm really saying that. Um, it kinda is shocking to me. I will take the next percent out for some more runs, but again, it just feels too bulky. I'm not in love with the upper. Um, that is that. And just little, put a little pepper and salt on top. The world record is still he held in the 4%. Now maybe in about 10 to 12 days, from, no, when is it? About 15 days from now, we're gonna see a new world record in the next percent midsole. Again, I'm not sure if Kipchoge is doing the next percent with the vapor, uh, with the fly knit upper. Uh, but at least at this point, as of the date of this recording, this shoe still holds the world record for the marathon. So I'm just putting that out there to add a little spice, add a little pizzazz to today's vlog. So I love you guys. Question, keyword, flying it. Keyword, flying it. And that question of the day, you better believe it. What is your next marathon race? What shoe are you wearing for your next marathon? I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm telling you everybody, I put this shoe on again today. It's been a little while. It felt so at home. I felt in control. I felt like I was ready to go rock and roll, frankly, and that I was in control, not the shoe. I love you all. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Thanks for just rocking and rolling and like, well, boom, we're getting closer. We're getting closer. All right, we're gonna throw it back to a couple old vlogs, of course. The first impression of the next percent will be on the right, and then a big workout I did. Oh gosh, was it nine months ago in the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit on the 
right? I do believe. All right, everyone. Love you all. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.